Hi, I'm Jeffrey McGuire. Most people call me Jam, J-A-M. That's my initials. I am a partner in Open Strategy Partners, and we're a company that offers strategy marketing and communications for technology organizations with a special focus around open source. The Drupal Association has asked me to make this little video to help uh, give especially first time attendees to DrupalCon a little more orientation about how to, how to thrive and survive at a big open source tech conference. And so that's what uh, I'm here to do today with you. I've brought in a few special guests from the Drupal community and uh, they'll be contributing their part to this video. I'm gonna try and run through a few simple points. What you shouldn't miss at DrupalCon, how to plan your time at DrupalCon, what to do and how to approach things like sessions and social activities at DrupalCon. And I'd like to give you a few tips on how to pack your bags for DrupalCon. So let's get started. Tell us who you are and what you do with Drupal. <coughs> so uh, I work as an engineering manager right now at Accelerant, uh, Accelerant Technologies, which is a, uh, a completely distributed organization. Uh, primarily based in India, but also in US and other countries. Uh, I am quite used to engineering, being called an engineering manager now, you know, which, uh, which, which kind of puts me in a, a mentor kind of role uh, for all my, to all my peers. Uh, I, I help them out with uh, various issues. You know, they, could, they could be personal, they could be uh, you know, something related to the organization or something related to a project they're working on. Hey, Jordana, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, tell us who you are and what you do. Sure thing. Uh, my name is Jordana Fung. I am from Suriname, a small country in South America, uh, the northern coast, uh, where we speak Dutch, which is kind of weird to the most people um, being in South America. Um, I am a Drupal community member. I've been using Drupal for quite a while, but I've been active in the community for the last few years where I went to my first Drupal camp in Florida. Um, a few years ago and since then I've been I fell in love with the community again um, and uh, decided I'm gonna try to dedicate more time um, being active in the community donating time and the issue queues and that kind of stuff and um, this is kind of how I joined the CWG I was approached by them and uh, we, we spoke and now I'm, I'm an uh, I'm a member of the CWG which is the Drupal community working group um, Drupal, the Drupal community has a few working groups. You have the licensing working group, the technical working group, the security working group, and I am part of the community working group, which usually has to do with, we have, we, um, we foster community help. So that has to do with um, engaging the community, uh, growing the community adoption, but also has to deal with conflict resolution um, and, uh, Drupal code of conduct matters, that kind of stuff, uh, fun well, stuff. That's not, that's not always the easiest or most comfortable job. So thank you very much for, for your contribution. That's, a, that's a really, really stepping up, taking on that kind of responsibility. So thank you for that. No, it's my pleasure. Tell us who you are and what you do. Okay, so I'm extraordinarily privileged to be the Drupal Association's community liaison. Uh, which means I get to make sure the Drupal Association better understands you, the community, uh, and the people in it, and the things that matter to, to everyone. And also that we can make sure everyone in the community understands the Drupal Association and our mission and the things that we're trying to do to make the community and Drupal project work into the future. Please tell us who you are and what you do. My name is Patti. I come from Iceland. Some know me as Patti Sonja. And I run a Drupal agency in Germany with, yeah. And you are one of the newest Drupal Association board members. Tell us about that. Yeah, since that's very exciting. Since uh, January this year, I'm part of the board. And I'm really proud of representing uh, Europeans and the European community inside of the Drupal Association. And I'm looking forward to all the tasks that are coming and all the work that we are working on at the moment. And what else do you do in Drupal land? Tell us about your company. 
So our company is a, it's a Drupal agency. So we do a lot of Drupal sites. Uh, we just counted it today. Uh, we have around 200 sites that we host and we maintain and we always build a new site every month. And that's what I do. But also I'm just very active in the Drupal community and I l I'm organizing a lot of camps. I've organized a camp in Iceland. Uh, here in Germany and doing Splash Awards, doing all kinds of business stuff here also with Drupal. So. Thank you. Yeah. DrupalCon is the largest regular gathering in the open source community around the Drupal CMS. And depending on whether it's in Europe or North America or another part of the world, it can draw anywhere from 400 to 4,000 People, if you're coming to DrupalCon North America, you can expect more like three or 4,000 of your best open source friends to be there. Uh, it's a great chance to meet people in person who you might only know as a screen name, you might have only seen in the issue queues, they might have helped you out on IRC, and now's your chance to get to spend time with them in uh, the real world, in physical space. And I would contend that uh, this is an essential part of community uh, in open source in general. These, uh, the chance to sit together, have a drink together, uh, uh, code together, work together, trade ideas is, is the glue that builds the community and, and the people, the, the fact that open source is thousands of very, very smart people who want to work together to solve hard problems. That's our killer app. It's not actually necessarily the code we produce. If we lost the code tomorrow, we would still have all these thousands of smart people who would want to solve hard problems together. And so coming to DrupalCon, as well as coming to other open source events within the Drupal community and other communities, this is your chance to really dive in, know the faces behind the names, and really uh, become more deeply engaged with, with all of this thing that we call open source software. Uh, going to DrupalCon specifically, I want to give you a few tips about uh, things that you shouldn't miss while you're at DrupalCon, how to plan your time at DrupalCon, how to behave while you're at DrupalCon, what to pack for DrupalCon, and what you should do after DrupalCon. So let me touch on all of those points for a few minutes, and you'll also be hearing from, as I said, some of my Drupal friends along the way. Well, DrupalCon, uh, well, like the name says, it's a conference, but it's, uh, you know, over the years I've realized it's, it's uh, you know, it's, uh, it's much more than a conference to me. I mean, of course, it's still a conference and, you know, like we, we meet people, we like, you know, look at different sessions and you learn new things and everything. But uh, uh, it has become kind of like my hanging ground with all the, all, all my, all, uh, all my Drupal friends, you know, uh, it's, uh, like ever since the first DrupalCon I was at uh, in Los Angeles, it was uh, like the way people introduce themselves, you know, the, 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 the kind of interactions I had with everyone, I didn't expect it. And you know, I was quite blown away, you know, that people were this friendly. And uh, this was, yeah, like I said, it was my first DrupalCon. I didn't, uh, I, hadn't, I had not met most of the people I met there and I was quite blown away that they were so friendly and so welcoming. And um, how did the people compare between the sort of online personas that you'd interacted with and the people in, in real life? Well, honestly, <laughs> uh, it, I was a little intimidated by a lot of people over there. Uh, I mean, like from their online personas, you know, uh, like, you know, the way they talk in online, uh, the, in the issue queues and everything. And, you know, you would feel that, wow, you know, it's like they're in a different league altogether. And uh, when I, Met them at DrupalCon. So, like, the funny thing is, you know, in many cases, I didn't even meet them. Uh, I was just walking by and they recognized me. And I was, I was left shocked, you know, that, oh, I mean, like, I'm not naming names here, but, you know, you, 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 you like, you know, I never thought you would, <laughs> and, like, these are all, you, you know, like, well-known contributors. And, uh, I mean, like, never would have imagined that, you know, they would come and introduce themselves to me. It, it, like, uh, you know, so like when, uh, when a few people did, you know, uh, did come to me and said, you know, like, hi, and so and so, you know, and thank you for all the contributions that you've done, you know, you have, you've done towards Drupal and I'm left speechless. <laughs> Tell us in, in your mind, what is DrupalCon? What's it for? 
DrupalCon is this amazing, huge conference. Um, I, I, it's pretty big. A place where basically the whole Drupal community and others come together, discuss ideas, work on adoption and growing the community and becoming stronger and sharing ideas, basically. What is a DrupalCon and what's it for? It's many things to many people. Um, DrupalCon is one of the biggest Drupal events of the year and it draws people from lots of different backgrounds. So you will have developers there, you will have site builders, you will have people who are actually making the Drupal websites, you will have people who are thinking, well, is Drupal for me? People who are assessing, is this the right thing to do? You will have people who provide services that Drupal people might want, uh, hosting, development services, etc. They're all in a big melting pot together and that has great advantages because we get to hear the frustrations we all have together and we learn how to make things better because if you don't have things that need changing we're going to get bored very quickly we're always looking to improve and you only do that when you get people together and they get talking what should other people know about DrupalCon? um to me uh what i figured out rather quickly it's it's about it's about meeting the community it's about um, really stepping foot. I think that's the one of the best things about the DrupalCon. Um, the sessions are amazing. The sessions are great. You'll learn so much. But remember, the sessions are also recorded. So um, I think the most you can get out of DrupalCon is kind of um, mingling, meeting people, going to the sprints, uh, the contribution sprints, going to the boffs. Uh, if there's something you want to work on, go. there's probably going to be a boff or a session or a sprint somewhere where they're going to be tackling it, which is great. DrupalCon is a place where we all meet at the same place. So the whole community, like regardless of where we are a developer, project manager, you are doing documentation, you are a client, everybody just come together at this one event. And that's the most important thing about DrupalCon is that this is the place where we all meet. What should other people know about DrupalCon? What should people know when they're going to their first DrupalCon? I can tell you that, you know, uh, even if you don't think you have contributed to Drupal, uh, and, and I measure these things differently, you know, I'm pretty sure that you have contributed, you know, even if you don't know it. Uh, even if you don't think that you have contributed to Drupal, you are very welcome in the community. You know, it's, it's uh, I, I honestly can't think of anyone who would, who would you know, uh, feel uh, who would feel hesitant to converse with you, you know, like, like li listen to what you have to say and, you know, learn new, learn things from you. Uh, I, I don't think there are any people like that. in community. If it's your first DrupalCon, there is a first time attendees social event on Monday afternoon. And that leads right into the exhibitor hall opening which is slightly later on Monday where you get to see all of the exhibitors and the sponsors and their tables and there's usually food and drinks to be had there and it's a really good way to start uh, your DrupalCon. If you go to the new attendees social, that is the place where you can also meet people who are there to welcome you to the community and show you what we're all about. If it's your first DrupalCon, there is a first timers attending like a little get together go there. That's where I met my DrupalCon buddy is what I call him. Uh, we were both first time DrupalCon um, uh, in Dublin. It was the first time attending, but we've been in the Drupal community a while. So it was nice to meet somebody else and to, that, that kind of have to find their way around. So uh, yeah. that's also something very interesting to do. DrupalCon Tuesday kicks off at 8 a.m. with the tradition that we call the pre-note. It become it comes before Dries's opening keynote. The pre-note is a little bit silly, a little bit of information, and a lot of open source and Drupal culture. I encourage you to come along Tuesday, 8 in the morning, if it's the only day of the year that you get up that early. Um, it's worth it, and frankly, it'll get you a better seat for the Dries note at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, which you should also definitely attend. The Dries note is the keynote address of Dries Berta, the Drupal projects. Uh, lead. You get a chance to 
get a picture of what he's thinking about the state of Drupal and where he thinks the project is heading next. So if you come to your first DrupalCon, I think the most important is to be there for the pre-note and the Dries note. But the pre-note is actually very special. And this was, uh, I was lucky to be there in Amsterdam. And that was something special for me, just to see like these people come together and, and have a lot of fun at eight o'clock in the morning. And then comes more serious part, which is then Dries just telling us about the future and how he is thinking about the project going and. Right, so Tuesday morning, kicking off the official DrupalCon program, eight o'clock, is the pre-note and if you get there, um, not only is it about uh, community and Drupal and open source values, um, it's also generally uh, fun and you'll get a good seat for the Dries note as well, which is, which is also valuable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that is like, this is just a lot of fun and I, I would just recommend for everybody who's coming for the first time and, and especially also to understand that, you know, I've been doing, I've been participating in the pre-note for the last two years and uh, I was actually surprised that I could just raise my hand and say I cannot join and that is also maybe important for everybody who's doing this for the first time whatever they're doing uh, tell everybody that you're willing to help or you're willing to do something or you want to participate and I can promise you that community is just gonna open up their arms and allow you to come and help and do whatever and they're gonna help you everybody's gonna help you to get right and that's not just DrupalCon right that's everything that's in just generally in uh, the Drupal community, yes. So since my first DrupalCon, I made it a point to never miss the pre -note. Uh So I think pre -note captures the whole, the, the message of the community in a very beautiful manner. So try and make it. That's the second thing I would say. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you for, you know, for persisting with it for such a long time. Make sure that during the whole week you save some time and energy in the evenings for the DrupalCon social events. There are a number of parties organized at any given DrupalCon. Um, there might be uh, semi-official sightseeing tours or some Drupal companies who are organizing uh, social events along the way. But Thursday night at DrupalCon is a very important tradition, the Drupal trivia night it's very competitive it's very fun and even if you're new to drupal or new to drupalcon you can make a contribution teams who have first time drupal attendees get bonus points so thursday evening trivia night kind of a must do it's really really fun so how are you going to prepare and plan for your time at drupalcon you should really uh consider your situation, your needs, and your skill sets, and make a plan accordingly. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of sessions. That's a big part of the conference. There are multiple tracks across Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, um, ranging uh, from very, very technical topics to business-oriented topic -oriented topics and more or less everything in between. Make a plan, look through the schedule now, and decide what you're going to go to. If you log into the DrupalCon website, you can build your own schedule by clicking sessions and then you can see what you've uh, gotten yourself in for and how many time conflicts uh, you've, uh, you've got there. I have discovered on many occasions that the three sessions that I really wanted to see are all at the same time. Luckily, the Drupal Association has all of the sessions recorded and we can catch up with those afterwards online. There is a smartphone app for DrupalCon. It definitely works on iOS and integrates with the calendar there. I believe it has the same functionality for Android. That has been very helpful to me at times. Uh, when you are at DrupalCon, you're also gonna get a paper plan and you could just put X's on what you wanna see and take notes on about things there too. So my top tips to prepare for DrupalCon is definitely to look at the schedule before you go there because there's so much going on at the same time. And if you haven't figured it out before where you want to go, then, uh, then you're a little bit lost when you get to the con. So I would also, if you are interested in a particular topic, for example, if you're interested in decoupled uh, Drupal, then look at the um, sessions that are about that and mark them. So there's, on the website, you can actually mark what you want to see and you get your schedule uh, prepared. So, what I also think that there are certain um, people within the Drupal community who are actually 
maintainers, core maintainers that also have sessions. And that's also very interesting topics that they normally speak about. So I would mark them as a must see at DrupalCon. Depending on your profession, are you a coder? Are you a marketer? Are you a designer? Are you something else? There's going to be a selection of these sessions to see, but they are not the only thing that DrupalCon is about. Don't uh, neglect to check out the birds of a feather, affectionately known as BOF sessions. Those are spontaneously planned at the event and they're discussions between like-minded peers about really anything under the sun. And there are some uh, that are very serious about uh, technical planning and, and, and legal issues and what have you. And there's some that are very, very fun. Um, in the past, there have been uh, boffs to exchange chocolates, for example, which, you know, which is a pretty popular one. Look on the board at a thing called birds of a feather. Because uh, the birds of a feather sessions, the boffs, you might hear people call them, are a far more impromptu set of conversations that happen. They're, one, they're not recorded, so the only way you'll get to see that content is by actually going to that boff. And two, they are usually full of the most interesting people. What should, uh, what should people who are coming to their first DrupalCon what, what should they know? Uh, check out the boffs, the birds of a feather. Um, there are some great ones and I'd never paid, I didn't pay that much attention to them the first time around. When you go to sessions, it's really great. People really love it. If you tweet, if you share to social media, if you give compliments or quote things that you're excited about, that's a great way to promote the con and at the event there are be hashtags and all the information you need to share that so that people uh, who weren't able to attend can follow along with what's going on. People in open source, so DrupalCon is also kind of a giant show and tell. I have figured out a new way to solve a problem and I'm very excited about it and I want to tell you about that and I want to make sure that you are enabled to solve the problem in the same way. It's a, a real open source story. So, um, and, and most everyone who's giving sessions feels the same way about it. And so questions are very, very welcome. Most sessions you should wait till the end to ask questions, but questions are very, very welcome. Um, when you go to a session, it's a great opportunity to meet people. Another really important reason, uh, as I said, is community building at a DrupalCon. Sit down with people at a lunch table, at a session with you don't know, uh, introduce yourself, ask them what they do in Drupal, and uh, before you know it, uh, hours of conversation could have <laughs> could have already gone past. The sessions are always online. You can you can of course like that's a that's a very standard thing. Everyone says that you know you can always go see the sessions. But the whole point of going to a conference like DrupalCon is to meet people. So do that. Don't be afraid to walk up to people, uh, meet them, talk, ask questions. It's, it's about networking, it's about meeting people as well. It's, I think that's a very, a very good takeaway there. Be very open to communicate. Don't, uh, don't feel shy, don't feel that you, you would not have anything to contribute. And even if you feel that you're not going to contribute, don't feel awkward that you go and stand in a, in a group of people who are discussing your favorite topic. You know, be bold, be friendly. I would say walk around. We'll just look in rooms. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to walk into something, think this is not for me and walk out. No one's going to be offended. Yeah. Use your time as you think it suits it, you. Speak with people. If you find yourself in the wrong session, if you thought that a topic was going to be perfect for you and really exciting and interesting and two minutes in, 10 minutes in, it's not doing it for you or it's not solving the problem that you have, it is absolutely okay to uh, quietly stand up and leave the room in open source land. That's called voting with your feet and um, no one's going to be upset. And that's never a problem um, because you know, your time is precious. You have potentially traveled a long way to be there and spent a considerable amount of money. Make sure that you're getting the most out of your time, respect your own time too. Uh, visit the exhibitors area Monday for the opening reception and during the week, uh, the sponsors who've paid to be there and who make 
DrupalCon possible would love to talk with you about what they do and uh, it ranges from agencies to hosting providers to tool uh, uh, people who sell products and tools and and a lot of other things there are always games snacks coffee and so on it's a great place to organize to uh, to meet people to have conversations and check out what the exhibitors have on offer contribution is the heart of open source none of our open source software would exist without people who had freely given of their code to to turn it into the tools that we're using to make a living and hopefully to make the world a better place contribution is for everyone you don't have to be a hardcore old-time coder to contribute contribution means making drupal better making open source software better making the world better can you write a documentation can you take a screenshot can you file a bug report can you organize an event all of these things are contribution and at drupalcon there are contribution sprints running the whole time uh, a lot of it is focused on code of course and if you are involved in a particular kind of development or particular specialty you can probably find other people who are interested and help out and work together uh, to to make the software better but there's a lot of other ways to contribute at the contribution sprints and especially on Friday, there is a new contributor sprint where it is mentored contribution. They will help you get your system set up, help you find appropriate issues for you uh, to fix. And uh, real live patches will be committed during those contribution sprints. And that's always a really fun thing to see. Go to the boss, go to the sprint, sign up for a sprint, even if you've never done it before. It, there, um, I'm also a sprint mentor. We'll walk you through everything. There are different things you can do. It's called the contribution sprints, not the, the uh, coding sprint. So there's documentation you can help with, testing, screenshots. There's everything you know um, you could think of. So that's also very a gr very great way of jumping into the community if you haven't already. I try to make it to the sprints too. And at every DrupalCon, there is a mentored sprint for first-time sprinters. Yes. And yes. there's a lot of movement on um, the onboarding and tooling now getting much, much faster so that people can yeah. have, you know, a really satisfying contribution experience right. quicker. Yeah. So I think first-timers, um, if you can possibly make time to go on Friday to the mentored newcomers yeah. sprint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This mentored sprint, if you have not had a prior like you know a previous contribution experience the mentor sprints would help you in uh, some of the best practices surrounding the contribution and the drupal community is very very um passionate about welcoming new people about welcoming new contributors and 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 guiding them to successful uh, contribution whatever that may be and that's not just code of course as you pointed out yeah yeah definitely I agree that that's yeah very true when you've gone home from DrupalCon and you're back at work and you wish DrupalCon was still going on, there's a few things that you should do. You should really follow up with the people you met, make sure the conversations that you started keep going, make sure that the contribution that you maybe dipped your toes into uh, becomes a part of your life. You should share with people. A great contribution is sharing with people what you got out of DrupalCon. So write a blog post, write some more tweets, um, take the Drupal Association survey about how they can make DrupalCon better, and frankly, start planning the session that you're going to submit to your next local Drupal camp or the next DrupalCon so that you can come and be uh, one of the presenters and, and be right in the heart of the community. So I think my last point was how to pack for DrupalCon. Right now, especially if we're talking about a DrupalCon in North America, in the United States, there are a few tiny cultural and architectural issues that catch some people out, um, as well as some general tips about how to survive a conference day, right? A conference day can be very, very long if you want to get up and see a keynote speaker at nine o'clock and you want to go to several sessions and you want to do some contribution and you're going to be at a boff and you're going to then quickly maybe put your bag down and go to a social activity. Uh, the days can be very long and they can be uh, really dehydrating. I really try and take a reusable water bottle with me and most Drupal cons have had uh, water uh, fountains and, and dispensers where you can refill those without using too many uh, uh, disposable plastic bottles. That's how I do that. But actually drinking enough um, in North America, the buildings are at times crazy way 
over air conditioned. So that'll dehydrate you too. Um, but my tip uh, about American air conditioning is even in New Orleans when it was crazy hot and humid outside, the conference center was freezing cold and I had a wool cardigan, I had a jacket that I brought with me every time just to survive the American air conditioning. So if you're not used to that, pack a sweatshirt, pack a sweater, um, drink a lot of water because that, those two things will really knock you out if you're not careful. Wear comfortable shoes that you can walk around in all day. You're gonna be on your feet a lot. If you are the sort of person who needs to keep their energy up, bring some snacks, whatever you, your snack of choice is, pack a couple snacks in your bag to get you through those low moments in the day. My low moment is mid afternoon. And that's when you'll see me having, uh, you know, hopefully a coffee and a piece of fruit, but um, might be something less good for me to, to, to get me through too. Don't bring your biggest, heaviest computer. If you have a choice, bring just enough technology to get you through the day. If you don't think you're gonna need a whole computer, um, maybe just bring a tablet, maybe just bring your phone, maybe just bring a notepad, whatever level of technology you're comfortable with bringing, keep your bag as light as possible. I have shoulder problems from carrying around too many shoulder bags over the years. I always think about that too. Bring plug adapters if you're not from the US bring adapters and bring a multi-plug. Sometimes there are international multi-plugs, you know, power strips, places to plug in multiple devices. But if you're in a space where there are limited plugs and you can plug in a power strip and help a few other people out in the community, um, it's kind of contribution, but it's sure nice, you know, to, uh, to, to enable other people to charge their devices as well. Um, and when you get home every evening before you go to bed at night, make sure you charge all your stuff or otherwise you're going to, you know, you're going to be caught out the next day. I'm a real fan of paper business cards um, and I find them incredibly practical. Uh, bring along your business cards and um, collect business cards from people you're talking with. If you don't believe in wasting that paper, of course you can collect and organize your contacts any way you want to. I find them a really helpful tool um, to track all of the people that I'm gonna wanna follow up with after DrupalCon. One last point on packing, don't overpack your suitcases. If you can leave a little room, you should do so. DrupalCon usually offers a wealth of t-shirts, interesting swag, contests where you can win uh, different uh, things if they're drones, if they're uh, uh, VR goggles. Leave some space in your bag for all of the t-shirts that you're gonna be bringing home. What really sticks out in your mind about your first DrupalCon when you went to Dublin? Uh, the amazing people I met. Uh, it was amazing to to put a face where you've always seen names online. So this is, that was pretty great. Um, how welcoming everybody was. It was, uh, it was wonderful. I, I, thought it, I thought it was amazing. Um, uh, like I said, I've, I fell in love with the community again. Um, it, it, was, it was amazing to see all of this dedication. Um, everybody was so welcoming and warm and willing to share their ideas and their thoughts and be like, oh, if you need help, uh, this is my name. You can find me on IRC or in, in Slack. And uh, I thought it was just amazing. Now, you've never been to a North American DrupalCon before. What, what questions do you have about going to DrupalCon Nashville? So I was wondering, in your opinion, for example, um, I've been to the, the European one. Uh, is there a, a big difference in how, in, in, your, in, the, yeah, in your perception of it, how it's run or how, it's, how big it is maybe? Well, DrupalCon in the US is usually about twice as big as DrupalCon in Europe. So three or 4,000 people have been showing up to DrupalCon in the US and that scale of the thing is, uh, is really, really exciting. And um, you know, everything is actually bigger. The session rooms are, are um, often bigger. The exhibitors area is, uh, is really huge. So there's, the, there's just the number of friends that you have to say hello to, you know, it, it is, is, is bigger. Um, some people say that the European DrupalCons are 
geekier and more focused on the technology and more uh, sort of closer to our community roots, while the American DrupalCons are um, more focused on the commercial aspects. So a little more selling, a little more, uh, more people in suits, you know. Um, so that's, that's certainly uh, a different feeling. And, and for me, um, the, the, there's, um, there's, something, there's something just a little bit different in the air. And I've always enjoyed both of them. And um, yeah, so actually it would be great to get your impressions when you've, uh, when you've come, you know, when you've come back from this one and, and, and what you thought was different. Uh, frankly, the weirdest difference that I can tell you, the, the US DrupalCons um, uh, have been in warm places. And if you're not used to how Americans treat their buildings, I'm just saying, no matter how hot it is outside, bring a sweater when you come to DrupalCon for the day because the American air conditioning has almost killed me on a couple of occasions. That is a thing here in the U.S. Um, the AC, they blast the ACs. That, that is, right. uh, that is, a, in, that is also a good, tri a good tip. What, what was your first DrupalCon? My first DrupalCon was in London. Uh, or Croydon, uh, <laughs> which was wonderful. It was a, it was a really great Drupal con. I think one of the things that I really, I was really glad I did is I went up and said, hey, I'd like to volunteer and help. Uh, because what it meant was, even though I know very little, I got to meet people because I was almost forced to meet people and speak with people, which is a big deal. And it's kind of the point of an open source community, isn't it? Well, the community is absolutely the big, the, the big word there. Um, Drupal is nothing without the people who make it happen. And that's more than just writing the code. That's the people who, who write documentation. That's the people who uh, make events happen. That's the people who help other people understand things. Because it matters. Because that's how we make a system and an organization that's easy for new people like yourselves to understand it. Yeah. Without, without people working together, it's not going to happen. That's what makes Drupal special. So I heard that you have not yet been to a DrupalCon in the United States. Is that true? This, this is true. Yeah. Uh, because always been to European Drupal cons. Ever since London, I've been to every European Drupal con, but I've never been to one in the US, in, in, in North America. So what is it that you, as a first time attendee, want to know about uh, Drupal con North America? Well, I think I want to see how people interact differently, because I'm, I'm, I'm sure people do. I think that would be uh, fascinating for me, especially in my new role is to see how things work differently. See what type of people turn up to the event. Um, I've seen the ticket sales, obviously, but I want to see and spend time with people and chat to them. Absolutely, if you see me in the corridor, stop me and speak and say hi, because I want to learn about you. Uh, because I'm very used to people in, in Europe. I was in Vienna last, last September. I know people there. I don't know as many people in North America in the community. I absolutely want to get to know you. So stop me uh, and say hello. You might regret that, but... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hussein Abbas, thank you so much for taking the time to share your wisdom and experience with us. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you at DrupalCon soon. Bye. -bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me about this, Jordana, and um, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing you in Nashville in person again. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see everyone. Rachel, thank you so much for taking the time okay. to, to talk with me, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you uh, at DrupalCon really soon. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. I'm, it's going to be a huge event, and I'm going to get to meet some really amazing people and some great friends. And congratulations on your new job. It sounds really perfect for you and, and, and for the Drupal Association as well. It's good fun. Lots of hard work, but it's good fun. All right. Hey, take care. Thank you. See you later.
Badi, thank you so much for taking the time to share some of your experience with us. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you at DrupalCon really, really soon. Yeah, see you in a few days. Great. Bye. So I hope you found this video interesting. I will be doing a newcomer's welcome session on Tuesday, right after the Dries note as well. And I would be really, really happy to meet you in person. If you've got any questions for me, that's the perfect time to ask me. And you can also reach out to me at Horn Cologne on Twitter, for example. Um, pretty easy to find online. So thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you at DrupalCon. Thinking back to your first DrupalCon in Los Angeles, what do you wish you had known ahead of time? How would, it, how would you have prepared differently for the very first one if you could go back and do it again now? It's, it's, it, it was such a wonderful experience. I don't know what would have improved that. <laughs> <laughs>